What's up, folks? I want to talk about my league starter for this league, which was Frostblades of Kata Bosses. Yes, I actually did a build twice in a row from two different leagues. It's very surprising for me to do that, but I wanted to start with something that had a lot of rares in it so that I could use the new graveyard crafting. I want to start with something that I knew that would be pretty comfortable defensively because I could try out the new T17's content on it before we kind of knew what their scaling looked like. And I wanted something that was just kind of a chill playstyle to maybe save for future in the league if I needed to save a boss fight or an uber or something like that. I knew this thing was uber capable, I just didn't know if it was capable of the new T-17s, which, uh, spoiler alert, it's kind of not. Um, we'll get to that in a little bit once we go over the gear that I've changed and all that stuff. In the background, that's the Uthred fight from a T-17, this is my first time doing it completely blind, and with about 3 million DPS. So, for some of these bosses, you don't need a whole lot of DPS to be able to do them, but it's the maps themselves that are a little bit more on the spicy side. Trickster is still an amazing template for getting those defenses that you need with the big ES pool. We got that nice suppression, that's juiced up suppression. You got the recovery the moment you take a suppression, it's kicking off with some wicked ward action. That all works as you would want it to. But my DPS in this setup is kind of low because at this point in the league, Adorns were about 17 divines when I was doing this, and I did not want to buy an Adorn for the build, even though it would double my DPS and give me about a thousand more ES. I just didn't have 17 divines really to throw at the adorned and as i hadn't been making that many upgrades on this build as a result of that i was kind of weighing my options as to whether or not i wanted to push this one further or try out some other shenanigans but there's about 3 million DPS and 6,000 ES, and it's handling this fight pretty well. This is me going in blind, not knowing anything about what I'm doing. It's been, I don't know, six leagues, who knows how long since I've done the Uther fight, and of course the changes within that fight as well. So I take a lot of face hits, I take a lot of things that I shouldn't be taking damage to, like that right there, but I'm still doing the fight pretty comfortably. Now I did try the Lycia fight, the Uber Lycia fight, and the bait out phase is just undoable for this character, and big part of that is is that Baydat doesn't really stand still, you gotta keep moving around, and your damage is the chilled ground underneath the feet of the bosses. Uh, so if something is moving around a lot, it's kinda hard to sometimes sustain and keep that damage on them. So even, even if you could do it on 3 million DPS, a sustained damage, something like totems, brands, or more damage that you can do in burst and click on them is way way better for that as a as a as a way to do the fight so um it's not all t17 viable by any stretch of the imagination but like i said if i were to get an adorned on this if i were to change up some stuff i could probably be looking at about seven to eight thousand es which is very very comfortable and a dps range somewhere i would say from seven to maybe top end like nine million dps if we really went ha ham on it and changed out a couple of the pieces which, by all means, if you if you really like the playstyle, if you really like the defenses, I would recommend. It is strong and adorned at this price. Uh, at this point in the league, are down to about five to six divines for one that is good for the build. So definitely could be an upgrade viable thing there. But yes, it is it is T17 viable as a starter, and it worked out pretty well. If I skip forward a little bit. Uh, without making things crash, I do actually end up going back and clearing the entire map so that I just wanted to see what it's like, and it's it's rough, as you can tell, you know, some of these corridors are very weird with the way that Katabasis works, and you have to, like, swing and hit stuff, and you can't do it over walls, um, but it is doable of the content, and it's slow, it's not going to do anything kind of juiced content, anything like that, but for the most part, if you roll them T-17s a lot, then you can do some decently rolled ones, but... Overall, I would say that I, I could make a whole other video on my gripes with T-17s, and I, I, I would not say that this is exactly a build recommended for the vast majority of T-17 content. I think it can do some of them. I, this is how I unlocked my map device slots, but I wouldn't go ahead and say that this is a... Uh, blanket viable T17 build by any stretch of the imagination. You do have to roll them and, uh, you know, this is without doing any scarab cheesing or shrine cheesing or anything like that. This is just a basic, my my normal map layout in a T17. But I, I, I would be hesitant to say that this is, this is a good way of doing T17s as a whole, but you can you can roll one that you can complete, especially if you choose your bosses wisely. Just don't do Lycia. Baydat is an absolute nightmare in that fight. But let's let's look into what I changed and what I kind of modified about the build. 
now that we don't have the special ascendancies from last league first of all we're still using a cannon call mech still best in slot you're not going to beat it it's just way too strong to have the socket of supports cold damage and cold damage over time the reason for that is catabasis has very very limited scaling on it you can't spell scale it with spell damage you can't really scale it with many of the things that you normally would you don't have element overload because it's not an element you can't do any kind of like low life stuff you can't do any kind of you know, there, there's no real scaling to it besides cold damage and cold damage over time and weapon elemental dam damage with attacks. And that's it. Those are your scaling avenues. So when it comes to scaling and beyond this, this is your best insult weapon. That there is there is no weapon in the game that beats it. The only thing that can beat a Cane of Call Mac is if you do some kind of crazy hybrid influence helmet with sockets in it, then you wear a Cane of Call Mac still so that you can put in enlighten into your cane of coal max so that then you can get in more auras in it it's it's just it's you're gonna you're gonna be wearing a cane of coal mac whether you like it or not so that's still best in slot uh now that we got our chest piece back we got to get those sweet sweet graveyard craft chest pieces of t1s across the board let me leave my global global's great i love you global but right now i'm talking um t1 Defenses across the board are very easy to do with the graveyard crafting, so we get those big chests back, and I had hit this one with tempering orbs, so I got myself a nice 2583 with 580 energy shield. Very nice. You could do the same thing with things like your helmet uh, to get a very nice juicy ES helmet, as you can tell. I do not have one because I haven't really pushed this character that far as a result of that. But because we got our sockets back, what I ended up doing was putting all my auras in my chest piece and running an Enlighten that I found myself and then corrupted to Enlighten 4. This let me fit in all my auras and get a nice little chunk of ES uh, mana pool from that and allow me to attack pretty consistently. So that was pretty good. I think you can even push this further if you got some reservation efficiency on your helmets. Uh, you could probably fit in one more aura of some kind. You could fit in, um, I don't know, maybe you could fit in an aspect. Maybe you can fit in hatred. Maybe you can fit in uh, skitterbots. Skitterbots would probably be the easiest one to fit in. So maybe you swap out, let's say, blood and sand into your boot socket here and put in skitterbots here. Uh, with reservation efficiency there, you'd get a nice little boost of DPS from that. So I would recommend going that route. So swap out this to there put in some skitter bots get some reservation efficiency on a helmet with some good es rolls and you'll be good to go with that i think that's probably the way to do it replica fangs are still super cheap for this build so definitely one of those that you can pick up super nice and easy your rings are going to be one of them has to have accuracy and then wed once again the only scale of avenue you can do is increase weapon elemental damage with attacks you cannot use things like um precise techniques you are not doing attack damage you are doing elemental damage with attacks and that is a very specific role so no precise techniques no element to overload can't do any kind of low life stuff because you can't scale this with spell damage you get the drill it's very very limited so when it comes to that 20 percent buff that i got from the um patch notes i i kind of wish they would just give us another avenue of scaling for it something else you can do because right now no matter where they put the base number at, it's always going to hard limit really hard, quickly at some X number. And right now, I think that's about 8. You can push it to 10 mil, and the way you would do that, if you really wanted to do this hard, you could push this to 10 mil by, instead of specking into One Step Ahead, you spec into Swift Killer, then you spec into Frenzy Charges, get a Fractured Frenzy on your glove, make that your glove, and then use a chest piece that generates for you Frenzy Charges, that combo would be capable of pushing Katabasis up to about 10 at the very top end, uh, about 12 million if you really, really went hard on it. But losing one step ahead, of course, will make it feel a little bit wor worse and weirder when it comes to certain maps and make it so that you can't roll certain modifiers in your T17s. There is the boot craft uh, for the graveyard if that has... Uh, a similar style to one step ahead but that's only movement speed it's not action speed so that one's not going to be as powerful it's not a one-to-one -one replacement for the skill uh, but it is something you can look at getting into the build and messing with that as well if you wanted to as far as the rest of the stuff goes i haven't really changed all that much you can tell i'm still two points away from there got a bunch of the eight eights corrupted ready to go and i was going to just put my adorned into the build next once i was to hit 96 
but at the time, like I said, Adorans were just too expensive. I might still hop back on this character, honestly, and get those last two levels, get the Adorned in here, and then use this as a backup character for clearing up Ubers, because it is very, very good at anything Uber-wise, except maybe Exarch is the one I would be afraid of doing on this build, because I don't know how well I could move around Exarch, uh, but I think that would be just an execution problem on my part, not so much a build problem, I just need to get more comfortable with the Exarch phases within the build. Uh, other than that though, I think that the build is still in a very very good state, I just wish Katabasis had a bit more of a scaling thing than just get the level as high as possible, get some wed, and then wear up Kana Kolomak. I think that's a very limited avenue of scaling that I, I wish we had, you know, spell damage scaling. Um, I wish it had maybe had some kind of a different exposure element for chilled ground, stuff like that, because the only thing I could do is now that I have my chest as a six link, I was able to then put in, um, where is it? Where did I put it? Over here. Uh, Bone Chill, Cold Snap, Frost Blink, and I was going to put in one more link there, maybe enhance to boost up this as well. Get Cold Snap in the build, make it so that it has Bone Chill on it, make it so that that chilled ground support is boosting up the rest of my damage, and then, you know, using things like Glacial C Cage to give me make it so that everything's chilled, it gets more damage taken, stuff like that. It, this did allow me to put this in here, and it did give me back some more of that damage, and I could use Val Cold Snap to generate Frenzy Charges, and so on and so forth. It's just... If you're really looking to go into doing T17s on a comfortable system, um, this build is a, a little shy of it. It's not it's not fully there yet. I think it could get there, but it's a little shy. And the other thing that I also was able to add in is the automated steel skin and the automated call to arms. That's what these two things are here. So I have automation on steel skin, so that that's just popping off nonstop, so I don't have to have it on left click. And I have call to arms automated ancestral cry, which means that I get those plus two additional strikes that I used to have on my gloves. I haven't even put cold damage over time on these gloves yet. Uh, or the strikes or anything like that, but I don't have that on there because I have Ancestral Cry taking care of that. If I got it on my gloves and the Cry, I'd be hitting like four targets at once, which would be insanely good for mapping feel overall, so that'd be another great way to do that as an upgrade to the, to the build. Um, honestly, speaking, like it, it is a build that I absolutely love. I think it's it's very fun. I wish Katabasis had a scaling avenue that was different. Um, I, I wish the damage could be a little bit higher for the playstyle because it is very um, damage. The damage is very stationary, so if something moves, I wish there was a little bit more damage uh, where it was. I think the 20% buff was good, but I I need a little bit more back to to really say that the the skill is in a in a good range of damage for how limited your scaling is. And I do like the changes that you're able to do because of the fact that we got our chest piece back and putting in more links and getting reservation efficiencies and all those upgrades into the build is very very nice. I like the, the fact that Adorn stayed in the game and we got to use him again and I, I can now afford one for this build and boost it up even higher. It's all a very, very good build. If you want to check out the full guide, like I said, it's linked below. But I don't know if I could say that this is definitively a recommendation for if you are looking to do T17s on a general basis of not having to spend hundreds of chaos re-rolling them because some of these things they're just brutal like you you need so many things to make these t17s work that you're gonna be rolling them looking for better rolls uh over and over again until you know you you land one that you can do um i would i would rather say that it's if you're looking to do t17 content look for a build that is more versatile for this uh, kind of I'm, I'm trying to make one myself right now and it's it's really tricky not to just go with the the handful of meta builds that people are using for them they're they're very oppressive they're very difficult um, and i'm not going to get into my gripes with them in this video but Battle Bosses was a good league start. I very much enjoyed it. I like the fact that it's full of rares that you can use the graveyard crafting to improve and make better and all this cool stuff. It's definitely a build that if you're interested, you should check out. Um, different variants of it probably do exist, but uh, this is my variant, and uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you uh, try it if you're interested, and I hope you stick around to watch the next video because I'm making a Ragecaster. It's fun. Peace.